Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a topic that is near and dear to me, neuroplasticity. And this is in response to one of our viewers who asked us to make a video on this topic. And so today we're going to talk about what neuroplasticity is, how the science of neuroplasticity is used in mental health treatment, and the top five things you can do today to help improve your brain's neuroplasticity. So without further ado, let's get into it. So what is neuroplasticity? Well, neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to adapt, to reorganize itself by forming new neuronal connections throughout life. And it allows the neurons or those nerve cells in the brain to compensate for injury and disease and to adjust their activities in response to new situations or to change their environment. BDNF or brain derived neurotropic factor is a key peptide in neuronal growth and plasticity. High levels of this molecule have been detected in the hippocampus, the amygdala, the cerebellum, and the cerebral cortex in both rodents and humans, with the highest level being found in the hippocampus. Now, if you missed it, my very first video here on YouTube was on how exercise treats depression. And one of the keys of exercise treating depression is neuroplasticity. And if so, if you missed that video, please go ahead and check it out because you'll see how the brain adapts and how the brain improves with exercise. And so why is neuroplasticity important for mental health? Well, depression is considered a chronic inflammatory condition amongst other things. And this inflammation can damage the brain and reduce areas of function in the brain, primarily the hippocampus. And because it affects this region, it can decrease that BDNF, hence decreasing neuroplasticity. Brain inflammation uncontrolled can actually hurt or kill brain cells, can prevent new brain cells from forming, can cause thinking problems, speed up brain aging, and like we mentioned, decrease that brain-derived neurotropic factor. And so one of the therapies used to treat depression is cognitive behavior therapy. Cognitive behavior therapy works on reframing your thinking. And so what you think affects how you feel, how you feel affects how you behave, and all the way around the triangle. So when you change how you think, you can affect those other points. And this actually can create new pathways and improve neuroplasticity in the brain just by learning new things. And so besides cognitive behavior therapy, what are some other ways to improve neuroplasticity? Well, the first one is you guessed it, exercise, okay? Because that's my number one thing. The neural changes that result from regular exercise are increase in blood flow and circulation to the brain, increase of endorphins, neurotransmitters, and a reduction in cortisol, which when released chronically under lots of stress can cause brain inflammation. Exercise reduces cortisol. Exercise also induces a positive stress response that can rewire our brain and reactions to stress to become more resilient to stress. And this levels out the connectivity between the hippocampus, the amygdala, and the prefrontal cortex. So moderate to aggressive physical exercise of at least 150 minutes per week have been shown to decrease depression by about 22%. Also, brain exercises such as lumosity can also help improve neuroplasticity. And with games and brain exercises like lumosity, you're also learning something new, which takes us to number two. The second way to help improve brain neuroplasticity is to learn a new skill, like playing an instrument. So in this one study, they found that after four months of piano lessons, in people aged 60 to 84 years old, they found that they had an improved mood as well as significant improvements in their cognitive skills of attention, control, 
motor function, visual scanning, and executive functioning. And so just by making those new neural connections by learning a new skill like playing an instrument really help develop neural plasticity and help improve their brain function. So you can learn a new skill like play an instrument or find a hobby or play a sport or learn how to play golf or something of that nature. Just learning a new skill can really help create new neuronal connections. Number three, another one of my favorites is nutrition and diet. So intermittent fasting or reducing your caloric intake by 20 to 30%, which is just eating until you're about 80% full, improves synaptic resilience to damage, improves synaptic performance, and reduces inflammation, which improves cognition. And so intermittent fasting or reducing your caloric intake can be very beneficial. As the standard American diet typically doesn't offer a lot of nutrients and we tend to overindulge and eat past the point of being full. So cutting your calories back just by 20 to 30% could be beneficial. However, you should always discuss changing your diet with your provider first. Another dietary recommendation is the anti-inflammatory diet like the Mediterranean diet. Diet that is rich in antioxidants and phytonutrients can be very beneficial and help with that inflammatory process that could be going on in your brain. Some phytonutrients like resveratrol can increase longevity, preserve memory, and the hippocampal microstructure. Resveratrol is naturally found in grapes, purple grape juice, and some berries like blueberries and cranberries. Flavonoids found in cocoa, so chocolate, but good chocolate, raw cocoa, or even dark chocolate have powerful anti-inflammatory properties as well as antioxidant effects. This can improve blood flow and be very neuroprotective and enhance mood and cognitive function. Curcumin is another neuroprotective polyphenol. It's anti-inflammatory and antioxidant, and you can get curcumin in like turmeric. It also improves your cognition and mood. And of course, your essential omega-3 fatty acids and making sure that the omega-3 has a good balance between the EPA and DHA. Omega-3 fatty acids are essential to our diet and are required for proper brain function. They protect brain cells. It's essential for cognition and memory, optimize synaptic plasticity, so helps improve that, and is essential in building the myelin sheath or the protective layer of the neuron that enhances efficiency in the processing of information and your B vitamins. B vitamins are essential micronutrients. They're essential for neuronal function and neurotransmitter production. And so if you're thinking, wow, these are a lot of different things and foods and how can I incorporate everything? Well, take a look here. This is the MIND diet. The MIND diet is a type of Mediterranean diet combined with the DASH diet or low salt diet. And as you can see here, if you incorporate this, this will help improve your brain function, hence improving neuroplasticity. So at least three servings of whole grains each day, at least one dark green salad and another vegetable each and every day, berries at least twice a week, at least one ounce serving of nuts each day, you can have your beans or legumes at least every other day, poultry at least twice a week, fish at least once a week, that'll give you that omega-3, especially salmon, halibut, sardines, fatty fish equals omega-3. Now you wanna stay away from and limit your butter. So no more than a tablespoon of butter or margin a day. If you're gonna be using fats, fats aren't bad, but make sure you're using good fats like olive oil, avocado oil, even coconut oil. Cheese and fried foods, please limit this because this is pro-inflammatory for your body. And so no more than once a week do you wanna incorporate fat into your diet. And pastries and sweets, less than five times a week. So really minimize your pastries and sweets. Pastries and sweets have a lot of refined carbohydrates as well as refined sugars, which are pro-inflammatory. If you're gonna get sugars, you want it to be healthy sugars that come from fruits and vegetables. And so you're probably thinking, hmm, 
I don't know if I can get all of these nutrients into my diet. And let's be honest, most of us will not get adequate nutrition in our diets. And so we may require supplementation. So there's a link down below that I have to one of my protocols that I use for nutritional supplementation, just for general brain health. And you may find that useful. So go ahead and click that link. It'll take you to my full script account where you can get a 25% discount on your first order. And so, okay. We cover exercise, learning a new skill, diet and nutrition. What else can you do to improve your brain's neuroplasticity? Well, reduce your stress. Chronic stress produces cortisol and can be very inflammatory in the brain and body. And if you're paying attention here, you'll realize there's a pattern of inflammation causing damage to the brain and body. And so one of the main things we want to do is decrease that process. So decreasing stress helps to decrease cortisol. Cortisol is that hormone that's produced when we're really stressed, when we're trying to flee from a stressor, but in large amounts and chronically over time can be pro-inflammatory in the body, which increases the likelihood of chronic diseases such as depression, Alzheimer's, heart disease, etc. So one of the ways to reduce stress is mindfulness meditation. This has been shown to have powerful anti-inflammatory benefits. It's also been shown to be brain protective and associated with reduced age-related tissue decline and increased white brain matter plasticity has even been found with just short periods of meditation. So definitely incorporating this into your routine can not only reduce stress, but improve brain function and body functions and make you more resilient to physical illnesses. And now the last tip, my fifth tip on increasing neuroplasticity is getting enough sleep. Sleep is one of the most important things, especially when you're dealing with mental health problems. Sleep is foundational to all health. And if you're not getting enough sleep, you're probably having mental health problems along with other things. Chronic sleep deprivation leads to a decrease in brain derived neurotropic factor, also leading to increased inflammation of the brain which leads to cognitive deficits and metabolic imbalances. Sleep is essential for our bodies to restore and remove waste and is when most of neuronal growth and connections are made and when neuroplasticity is at its peak. So sleep has been found to be neuroprotective and to improve cognitive function and learning. So make sure you're getting enough sleep. And if you miss my video and the tips on good sleep hygiene, please make sure to check that out here in this video. So that wraps up the top five things that you can start doing today to improve your neuroplasticity. Is there anything else that you do to help improve your neuroplasticity? We'd love to hear about it and we learn from sharing each other's experiences. So please drop your ideas down in the comment section below. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel as it really helps get this message out to other people who will find it useful just like you did. And as always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey and I'll look forward to seeing you next week.